Hey everybody, welcome to The Mountain Gamer. I'm recording this quick and dirty here today because I don't want to waste any time. We're getting into this right now. We're going to be playing Descent using the Road to Legend app. Now, I have been getting a few requests via uh, the people who back me on PayPal to actually do a playthrough of this. So I thought, all right, let's 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 do it, right? So yeah, so there you go. Uh, let's jump into it right now. I'm going to show you how it plays. And yeah, before you, yes, I know I do need a haircut. So stop sending emails to me about this, mom. All right, let's do it. All right, hey everybody. So as you can see here, the, I'm actually shooting my old iMac with my phone. Because <laughs> I don't have the, uh, the necessary app to sort of record what's going on on screen. Yeah, that's the kind of high-tech stuff you can expect from the Mountain Gamer. So let's get into this right now. I'm gonna load my game. Now I have to say it's been close to a year since I have played Descent on the app. I mainly have been playing it now with a few of my friends. Well, not so much now because it's locked down. But yeah, the last time I played it was as the Overlord and with uh, three other people. So my game here is two gingers and a dwarf because I've got uh, these two ginger guys and a dwarf. So let's go. I'm playing the Kindred Fire campaign, which is a free campaign. And I think I'm close to halfway done. All right, so this is your main map here. Now you always have a Tamalier in the middle here. Um, if you see a city with a, um, a banner here that says begins in how many whatever weeks, this means this is your next mission, okay? This is the quest you're gonna go do. But if you look at top here, there's another one. This is a side quest. Now these things don't always pop up in between missions. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And from um, what I've seen on BGG, there are um, 10 different missions like this. And they'll pop up every once in a while, and if you, you know, if you do one and you succeed or fail or, or whatever, the app will not um, present this one to you afterwards, okay? So once it's done, it's done. Now, there's no way to go get those except if the app um, proposes them to you. So I, I wish there was like a list of like, or I wish actually there was a free play. That's the one thing that's missing in this whole app is just a free play. Like, yeah, I, I want to go play, I don't know, Kindred Fire Scenario 5, go. Or Random Mission Number 3, go. They, they don't have that, and that's a real shame. But anyway, so uh, quickly here, so that's the Random Mission, that's Timelier, that's where I'm going to go next. Um, up, uh, down here at the bottom here, wait, the bottom. This is just a menu for the rules. If you click on rules, it's going to open up uh, a PDF online. Um, yeah, so there you go. Options is just, you know, sound and stuff like that and then quit game, which we will not be doing. At the bottom here, you've got these three icons. The little man here is skill training. So if you have any XP to spend, as I have now, see all of those guys have one XP to spend, I can then go buy um, different skills, okay? Now these refer directly to the skill cards, the physical skill cards that you have in your game. And I believe you can even like sort of make change, right? Like if I say I don't want advance, yeah, see this bumped up to two, right? So if you find out that you don't like this skill anymore, or well, you can kind of like sell it and then go get something else. But for now, I'm not gonna train because I don't wanna break my noggin here with all these new skills, because as I said, it's been a while since I've played, okay? But just know that this is where you do this. Uh, then here, this uh, script looking thing at the bottom, right here, this is usually helpful when you are in the scenario. Like it'll say like at round one, this happened, round two, this happened. But for now, when you're in this particular map section, nothing really seems to be important here, right? And this up here is my score, noteworthy. If you click here, uh, your fame level influences the selection of shop items available in cities, as well as options for certain travel events. So I guess, you know, the the hotter you are, the better stuff you'll get, which is weird, because I mean, if, I, if I'm bad at something, I probably need better equipment, but you know, whatever. And then last but not least here, the pouch, that's your inventory. So this is all of the stuff that we have with us. And I will show you physically uh, my setup on the table in a moment. Now, all of these items uh, refer directly to what's on the table. So if it says heavy cloak, uh, this thing is exactly the same as your own heavy cloak that you have uh, physically on the table. So if you want, you can just put everything back in the box. When you're done, the app will actually take care of what you have. Same thing with the gold down here. Now in the game, you will never um, 
take care of gold yourself, okay? Like, if you look at, at an item, usually at the bottom of the card, it'll say, like, 25 gold or something. Well, that's not how that works in the app. When you search a search token, you'll see, but the app will tell you, draw us, you know, an item card or whatever, like a, a search card, and you have gained six gold, something like that. Okay, so you never keep track of gold, that's all within the app, and you'll find that the values are different than what you're usually used to, but that's fine because they do adjust the price uh, for these items accordingly. So that all works out. So now, um, see, it says here, begin in three weeks, which means I can spend a bit of time shopping in Tamalir. And I think I'm gonna do that, because although I don't wanna play around with skills, I do want to maybe get me something for one of my characters, Grisbon. If I can get some boots or something, I would love that, because he is such a slow mover. So let's see what it says here, Tamalir. After the death of King Faladir, the city of Tamalir became the first and greatest of the free cities. Travelers from across the world may be seen on her streets, and coins and languages from a dozen kingdoms are traded back and forth in her many markets. So, travel. Oh, travel event. Yeah, this is basically, um, it, this kind of simulates what happens when you move from one spot to the other in the physical game, and then the Overlord's gonna have a travel card for you to resolve. I wasn't expecting it going into Tamalir. I thought these only happened when you move from a city to another place. Okay, so it says you find a hot spring and stop to bathe. Unfortunately, you feel no more refreshed than when you first got in. Okay, so there's no skill test or anything? Your journey continues. All right, fine. <laughs> Oof, look at that. And this went down to two weeks now. Oh, okay. Was not expecting that. Okay, it says, you remember the goods you are carrying and hunt down the peddler's partner. He pays you well for the return merchandise. You gain six gold. Oh, wow, I had totally forgot about that. This was like, like I said, almost a year ago. I had a road event where I had to do like a skill test to carry some dude's stuff with me. And I guess this is the payoff. I get six gold. Okay, cool. So, continue. Can I go into town now? Yay, there we go. So... Um, our thing said available in two weeks, right? So we can just click here to kind of like fast forward time and then the quest will be available, okay? But I don't really want to do the quest. I was hoping to do the, um, the bonus scenario because I don't want to get into the campaign with you guys. I don't want to, you know, spoil anything, I guess. Not that, you know, there's much to spoil really. Um, and then you can just say leave to go back to the map. So let's uh, do some shopping here so it says 235 okay this is our items that we can sell because you can always sell something back for the price that they're worth i don't think it's like that in the game i think it's probably half price or something in the physical game i mean but for now this is what we have here so a steel broadsword now if we click on it yeah see it doesn't tell you what it does this is kind of crappy i'm gonna do right mouse button here nope not even so now it's up to you to go through your deck and look at what these things do, which is, if you ask me, poor design. If I click on this or if I hold it down, you know, it should go boop and kind of show me what the whole card is. All right, so a sword to fight, a sling to fight, an armor, immolation, what else? A light hammer and a scorpion helm. Now, one thing I have noticed is there's no act one and act two when you're using the app, okay? It's just like one short campaign. And so they'll, they'll mix in uh, Act 1 and Act 2 weapons, but here you see it's only Act 1. But I did end up like, I think after my second mission, I had like an Act 2 thing that I could buy. So yeah, they will mix these things up. Okay, so I'm gonna go look at these cards and I'm gonna come back in a second. So I've actually thought about this and I'm not gonna buy anything. I actually like my setup, which I will get into shortly. So right now what's going to happen is, um, I think I'm just going to say I'm going to leave because I, I don't want to do wait one week because I'm afraid I'm going to lose that bonus scenario. I don't want to take a city action either because I really don't remember you guys. It might actually fast forward time and I don't want to do that. But I think that when you take a city action, I think it fast forwards time and it sort of like resets these items, which could be a good thing in certain cases. But you know what? I'm just going to say leave. Okay, so I still have two weeks. Oh, there's another quest. Was it there before? It wasn't there before, right? I don't think so. Um, okay, let, let's see what it is. This is Soul to Save. A beloved priest has been kidnapped by one of his former acolytes. Okay, and this one is... Hook, Line, and Tentacle. It is rumored that the treasury within this fort remains untouched, guarded by a nest of devious myriads. Hmm... So what do you think? Do we go battle some Marriott's for treasure or do we go save a dude? Um, I don't know. I feel like uh, maybe I'm greedy. Marriott's? Ah, those Marriott's, man. It's those, uh, 
those snowflake catchers that my wife uh, likes so much. <laughs> if you don't know what that's about, I'll uh, I'll put a link in it in the description. Yeah, you know what? Let's go. Let's go fight some uh, some snowflake catchers. So let's do it. All right, travel. All right, here we go with the travel event. You come across an old woman sitting cross-legged on a brightly colored blanket. I knew you would be along, she says. Danger lies before you. Cross my palm with gold and fortune may find you. She went from a gypsy to an old-timey 1940s <laughs> someone. Okay, so we can buy a mystic rune for 50 gold. We can ask her to read your fortune, 2 gold, or ignore her. Hmm, a mystic rune. That's pretty cool. How much money do we have? 235? Yeah, you know what? Buy a mystic room. Let's go! <laughs> Why not? From a soft cloth pouch, she produces a familiar purple rune with an intricate sigil. A pretty bauble, says the old woman. But she frowns when you produce a very similar item, the mana weave. Yeah, I know we have that. Hmm, never mind them. She scalls at you as she places the rune back into the pouch. As you depart, you can still feel her gaze upon you, along with a slight vibration emanating from the rune you carry. Okay, so she didn't... I mean, did she take the 50 bucks? I'm gonna say no, right? <laughs> I hope not. Hey, everybody. <laughs> That's me. Okay, so... I mean, let's just check, right? No, 235. Okay, she did not steal that uh, that thing, that money. Okay. Yeah, see, this is the mana weave right there. Hmm. All right, so w when you start a scenario, this is what you end up with. Let me just drop the brightness here a little bit. Yeah, better. Okay, so it says Fort Kandrick was built spawning a river, but its masons failed to account for the quickly expanding banks. Barely a decade old, the fort sunk into the slowing into the slow moving waters. It is rumored that its treasury remains untouched, guarded by a nest of devious Marriotts. Many adventurers have entered the sunken ruin. None have yet returned. Continue. All right, next the app says to set aside all of these tiles and one white objective token. Okay, so I'll do that and I'll come back. Okay, continue. The fort appears to be barely more than a pile of rubble when you first locate it, the lazy current having swallowed the majority of the structure. Not until you wade through the waters covering its foundation do you find an entrance. You duck inside and are immediately assaulted by the chaos and danger of several myriad tentacles. Grr. Continue. All right, so place 21B, 8B, one entrance and one door. Place the heroes on the entrance. So the entrance is down here, okay. Now one thing I should mention is, uh, this obviously is a door here, but in, uh, in the app or in this mode of play, you can open doors, but you can never close them back up, okay. That's one of the things that you cannot do, because, uh, yeah, because reasons. So there you go. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. Okay, I've done this, so let's continue. Long, slimy tentacles reach out from the holes in the wall and floor. They lash out at you as you pass by and try to pull you under the stagnant water. Place three objective tokens face down as shown. These are tentacles. Okay. All right, I did that. I'm going to show everything once it's done, so continue. A tentacle blocks movement and line of sight, and can be attacked as if it were a monster. Each tentacle has one health and rolls one black defense die. Okay, continue. Place Marriods as shown. Okay, so here you see a Marriod. Now, sometimes this is gonna, is gonna happen, like with the actual icon, but other times it's just gonna be like a flat, like a, an outline, a white outline, and it'll say Place the Marriott group as shown. So that means it's up to you to check on the back of your Marriott card for, you know, three heroes. And then if it says something like, I don't know, one minion and one master, well then it's up to you to then place the master and then the minion close to it. But in this particular case, uh, they're not talking about the group. They're talking about, you know, one very specific Marriott. So we'll place a Marriott as shown. Now there is a red outline. I believe that means it's a master. And if I remember correctly, if you check in the rules, I believe that every time the app asks you to place a specific or a singular monster, it's always going to be uh, a red one first. So I will place that on the map and continue. Okay, see? There you go here. That's just a white outline flashing. Place the flesh molder group. So I'm going to look at the card and place exactly, uh, you know, that number of 
Flesh Molders. Now if I look at my card here that you guys cannot see, it says that for three players it's two minions and one master. So I'm gonna go on the map, I'll place my master here, and then I can put my minions uh, anywhere adjacent to it. So I'm gonna do that. All right, that's done, continue. Place one search token is shown right here. We'll do that too. Next, setup complete. Objective, locate the lost treasury. Okay, continue. So see, now it says hero turn and, and the monsters have disappeared off the map. So this is the first thing that might be jarring to you. The app never knows where the monsters are and it doesn't care, okay? The only thing the app cares about is when you finish a turn. And then it cares about if you defeated any of these monsters or any of the groups, okay? So how gameplay is gonna work is I'm gonna decide who goes first with my heroes, and then we will actually alternate between heroes and bad guys. So like if you're used to regular descent, usually all the heroes go, and then the overlord plays his turn. But in this, like in the app, it's always gonna be hero, bad guy, hero, bad guy, hero, and then if there's nobody else, well then it's gonna be a new round, and the heroes, you know, everything refreshes and the heroes can start playing again. And now as far as everything goes on the map, you can always click on something um, just to know what it is, right? Like if we click on this thing here, it'll say the long tentacle blindly grasps and lashes in every direction. This token blocks movement and line of sight and can be attacked as a Vidor monster. It has one health and rolls one black die for defense. So there you go. So then you can just say cancel or if you've actually defeated the thing, you'll click on defeat. And I'll think, I think it'll say the same thing for all of those. Yeah. Now, um, this token here, if you click on it, deep in the water, something catches your eye. So if you end up taking a search action on the physical map, you click here and you tell it that you've searched it. Same thing with this door. You can open this door with an open door action. Okay, so if you open the door, confirm. If not, cancel. So that's it. So now the app is just waiting for me to tell it what I'm doing. Did I suddenly open this door? Which is, between you and me, impossible. You know, I don't think I can actually go through all the monsters and all the water and everything and open that door. But as dumb as it sounds, I could just click here and say confirm and the game will be like, oh, you've opened the door. You reveal this other room. That's, yeah, that's what's gonna happen. So the app is now waiting for me to tell it what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take a turn with one of my characters and once I'm done, I will click on said character, let's say her, and I'll say end turn at which point the app will then activate a monster group and there'll be a pop-up window telling me what to do with that monster. So with that being said, let's just go check out my characters real quick. Now I'll zoom into each of those individually um, and if you guys wanna read all those cards, you can pause and read them because like I said, I will you know talk about these abilities as we get to use them. All right, here we've got Grisbin the Thirsty. Now I will be using these tokens to signify uh, when my characters take some actions. I've got these dice over here uh, just for their stats because I do not like to put a whole bunch of tokens on the cards. It's just a pain in the butt. So he's at 14, he's got four stamina. These are his cards, so I'll give you a few seconds to check those out. Uh, by the way, I have him set up as a knight, as you can see here by the top three cards. Here we've got Jane Fairwood. She's set up as a Wildlander. She has nine health, not eight. Uh, this is because of this card up here, uh, down here. She's got plus one health. And she's got five stamina and all this good stuff, so you can check that out. And lastly here we have Tomble Burwell. He is set up as a Thief. Eight health, five stamina, and that's all of his stuff. All right, let's go to the board. All right, so this is the setup. Now on the map, this is actually like so, but it kind of looked bad on camera, so I just flipped it. So here we've got our three characters and the Meriod, as well as these tentacles and our three flesh molders, which uh, at our house, we like to call the guys making pizza. Look at this guy flipping pizza dough. Ha -da -da -da, ha -da -da -da. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so what are we gonna do? So these things block movement and line of sight. So I think I'm gonna have Grisbin go first. Now he's got a move of three, so he could do one, two, but this is water, so he needs like three, four to get here. And I wanna get him here actually to hit the Marriott. So I'm gonna have him do one, two movement points, and then two exhaustions, and then an exhaustion and a movement point. So move, move, two exhaust, one exhaust and a move. 
I need to bring his uh, stamina from four down to one because he took three exhaustion points. Right, now his second action will simply be to swing his axe into this guy's face. Now, um, Grisbane is using this thing here, the iron long sword. You roll a red and a blue. And if you ever get a surge, which you almost never do, you may force the target to reroll one defense die. So let's do that. Kick him in the face. Now, you might notice um, these cards here. They actually look like this. I printed those out because it's pretty much the only way or simple way that I found to track uh, who you're doing damage to. Like this is my number one uh, flesh molder, this is my number two, and down here is the, uh, the masters. So if you look at my guys here, I've drawn these little pips on them, so I know this guy's number two, which refers to this. So that's the way that I found to keep track of the health points because I don't like to put tokens all over the board, it's just too messy. And uh, up here I've got a reference sheet here just to, you know, to help me remember what's on these dice. So, we are attacking the Marriott who has seven health right now and who defends with a black die. So let's do Grisbane's attack, hoping for the best. Oh boy, that went all over the table. All right, let's roll again. Ooh, okay. So that's four hits, no surges or anything like that. Let's have this guy roll. <laughs> that is the best thing he could have rolled. Wow, that was a total whiff from Grisbin. And there's nothing in his abilities that he can actually use. That being said, he does have his heroic feat um, use, use during your turn to perform one attack action. This is in addition to your two actions this turn. So I could do that, I could flip the card over and do that. Um, but I think it might be too early for that. Now I have to mention, in the app, the missions you're playing don't have two separate encounters. It's just one one thing, one big encounter. So you don't get to flip this twice, okay? You never reset this. So if you're gonna use it, uh, that, this is the only time you're gonna use it. You won't get to do it again. So I don't know that it's time to actually do that. So yeah, so we'll just consider Grisman's whole thing a miss and we'll move on. So now we have to tell the app that Grisman's turn is over. Okay, so we click on Grisman and we say end turn. All right, so here we go. Now this thing, the, the app has decided to um, activate the Marriads. Now see, these uh, the flesh molders are on top, but they actually decided to activate the Marriads. So you never know in which order these things will activate. So it says Minion Marriad. Now we do not have a Minion Marriad on the board, and that's one of the downsides or kind of dumb things with this app is it doesn't really know what you have put on the board. It knows what types of creatures, but it doesn't really know how many there are. It doesn't know, it doesn't know anything, right? So you, you just have to use your judgment. And in a way it's kind of strange because um, during setup, you know, like this icon had popped up on the map and it was like bouncing up and down and it said place a Marriott, right? And according to the rules, you always have to put a master Marriott. And yet the app is like, activate the minion Marriott. But you're like, no, I don't have any. So then you click here, all minions activated. And then it switches to Master Myriad, which is what you actually have on the map. Yeah, annoying, I know. But hey, you wanna play Descent Solo? That's how the cookie crumbles. So when you look at the screen here, there's always a special type of ability here, which kind of simulates the Overlord playing one of these cards to mess with you. And then you have the actions and you'll see how those works. So let's check the top here. Each Marriott attack may affect one additional hero within two spaces of that Marriott. This is basically a description of the Marriott's reach ability, I believe, which is weird because if you click on it, then you can't. Okay, usually when you click on it, you can go information and it'll tell you the Marriott will use reach as much as possible. But then again, this is, this is kind of that. Okay, let's move down here. So, now you'll see here there are more than two. Sometimes they're like five or six or whatever. But the, um, the basic rules are kind of the same as in regular descent in the, in the sense that monsters can move twice, but they cannot attack twice. So what you do is you start reading off these, these actions from top to bottom, and you do the first one that you can do. If ever you can't do it, you skip and you go to the next one. And if you skip, you go to the next one. And if you skip, you go to the top. And you keep cycling like that until you've done two actions or you've done one and then mm, you can't do another one and then you just end the uh, minion's turn, okay? The monster's turn. So let's read this one here. So as an action, engage the farthest hero who is within six spaces. Okay, well, okay, what's engage? Good, so there are some, some there's some terminology here, okay? 
engage and spot, which you don't see here. Engage and spot, if it were up to me, should read as use a move action to engage or use a move action to spot. Engage means use a move action to try to get adjacent to uh, the hero. Okay, that's what engage is. Spot is use a move action to move within three spaces of a hero. That's what that means. Sometimes you'll see um, retreat. Now, again, retreat is kind of a weird thing. You can never activate the word retreat if you haven't previously moved. And if you have previously moved, you need to have some uh, movement points left. Yeah, I know, it's, it seems tricky. And sometimes it'll say something completely different, like use a move action to retreat. So then it means, even if you haven't moved, use all your movement points to get out of there. So that's why I'm saying they should put here, use a move action to engage or use a move action to spot. I know, it can get confusing, but you'll see as you play, you kind of get into it. So right now, engage the farthest hero who is within six spaces. That's definitely gonna happen. We'll go to the map afterwards. And then what would happen? Attack a hero. Well, actually, hold on. Engage the farthest hero. Oh, that's weird. So that means he's not even gonna attack Grisman because Grisman is all up in his face. So he's gonna try to go to the farthest hero. Okay, all right, so he will do that and then he'll just attack the person he can attack, probably. Okay, so let's go to the map and check out what's actually gonna happen, but I think this is gonna be it. Okay, so before we do anything, I wanna tell you that I um, always play with the, uh, revi well, not revised rules, but the rules that came out in Imperial Assault, because as you know, Imperial Assault is basically descent, um, I guess with, you know, certain rules have been like simplified or made better, <laughs> if you will. So uh, one of the rules in Imperial Assault is the large figures cannot move diagonally, okay? And I will be using that. A, because uh, it makes the game a bit easier. And believe me, um, in my plays with the solo app, I found that you really do need to make the game easier because this thing just beats up on you and you kind of have to cheat every once in a while or else you're just going to lose the scenario. I know, it sucks. So, I'm using the Imperial Assault movement rules that state that these guys cannot move diagonally. So, this guy has a move of three. So actually, he's not even going to be able to do what we were talking about. So if we look at the list here, engage the farthest hero who is within six spaces. Okay, so one, two, three, you know, well, it's that guy, okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So it would be him. So tr engage means use a move action to try to get adjacent to this guy. So if he shrinks down, let's say we have him shrink zweep, here, okay, this is him. Then he could, he could move three, which is basically one, two, and that's it, because this is water. So he would end here, and then we can have him appear anywhere. So, well, anywhere starting from that die. So let's say here. Yeah, that would make sense. So that's it. Boop. Just like that. So that was his first action to engage the farthest hero. And then it says attack a hero. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So attack a hero. So you see, he was engaging this person, but now it just says attack a hero. So basically, he's gonna attack... Uh, let's just have him turn here, because it's cuter that way. Uh, he's gonna attack Grisman, just because. Now, he cannot use Flail. I mean, it serves no purpose, because nobody is within two spaces of him. So he's just gonna go all out and attack that guy. Okay, so the uh, Marriott here is a bad mofo. He's got a red and a blue. If ever he gets, he gets a surge, it's plus two hits and or immobilize. Now, see, if you want to know uh, what he would use first, you have to go check on the app. And I'll show you in a moment, but you click on the little skull up on top and like a scroll is going to appear. And on that scroll right now, it says Marriott's spend surges in the following order. Immobilize, then uh, plus hits. Okay, so we know he's going to try to immobilize us first if ever he gets a surge. So for now, let's just see how many damage he does to my friend Grisbin here. And oh, wow, he did get a surge. Okay, so one, two, three, and immobilize. Blech. Now you see, before we even do that, and that's always the problem when I'm playing solo, there's so many abilities on so many of my guys, right? I could actually have had um, Jane here use first strike. And I actually think I'm going to backtrack and do that. Like, I'll keep this die result, okay? But I will have her do that. Because it says here, during the Overlord's turn, immediately after he chooses a monster to activate, which, you know, which I was busy doing, you may perform, uh, you may exhaust this card to perform an attack, targeting that monster with a bow. After this attack is resolved, if the monster was not defeated, it may continue its activation. 
you know, I always forget to do that because I'm busy moving the monsters on the board. So if you guys will let me, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you'll let me because I'm shooting this video. I'm actually going to do that. So I'm going to like put this on hold. Okay, these are the actual results. We will not be touching that. And I'm going to have Jane exhaust for two and actually shoot this guy at range. So let me drop her um, stamina from five down to three, and I will have her shoot this guy. Now she needs one, two, three, okay? One, two, three range, so let's see if she can get that. I'm pretty sure she can. So I'm just gonna replace this with this, okay? To show that that was what the Marriott had. And Jane, when she attacks, she attacks with her U shortbow. And uh, she can add range or she can add damage. So this is what she's going to be rolling. Let's do it. So she's attacking. She needs three range. Okay, she's got the range and she does one, two, three actual damage as well as plus one. So that's four. Okay, cool. So four and now let's roll for the Marriott. Four minus two is two. Okay, so the Marriott does take two damage. All right, so let's drop this down to one. Well, actually, let's just make this a five. Okay, okay, not too bad. Okay, and now zip, let's go back to the future. And let's continue the fight we were having between the Marriott and Grisbane. So we said that this was actually... All right, so let's do this here. So these were the results that the Marriott uh, had against Grisbane, and now Grisbane has to defend with a white die. He also has the shield. So let's roll the white die. Okay, that's one. So one, two, three, uh, minus one, that's two, minus another one, that's one. So I do take a damage and I get immobilized because he's got a surge and that's bad. Drop this down to 13. Now my poor guy is immobilized, which is bad. All right, so now uh, we tell the app that all Marriott's have activated. So that's done, goes back to the hero turn, and now we just choose who gets to play. So let's go back to the table. Now, I, we could spend time, you know, hitting this thing, but I really don't know if there's a benefit to it. I mean, you know, I don't think you'll get gold by killing these things. Maybe, I don't know. But for now, I'm gonna say, let's, um, let's activate her, okay? So her first thing is gonna be a move. She's gonna move a five, so. Or you know what, we could just exhaust. No, I really wanna keep her exhaustion points, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's have her do just one. Okay. Huh, I could exhaust and just try to shoot twice. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. Okay, so I will drop her um, her stamina from three down to two. So that's just one exhaustion points to get over there. And then her first action will be to uh, shoot this thing from this corner to this corner. All right, let's do it. All right, so once again, she's attacking with the U short bow. And let's do this. She needs a range of uh, two. Yeah, let's do it. Oh my god, what's that? <laughs> All right, now, firstly, um, again, you're watching The Mountain Gamer, so there are variants in house rules. The first house rule is, and a lot of people use this on BGG as well, whenever you hit an X, whether it's you or the Overlord, this is not considered a full miss. It's just considered that this die is doing nothing, okay? So if there were hits here, uh, well, there is one, it, it does go through, okay? Just so just so you know, because I don't want you to think I'm cheating or whatever. So spectacular stunts, my friends, but all for not. So I believe that now I will have her take her second action to just, you know, attack again. She needs to range. She has the range, she's got two hits and a surge, and that surge, I believe, will be an extra hit. So three hits for her. Let's roll for the Marriott. Woof, okay, so at least one of it goes through. Now, I could use her power to re-roll that dice, that die, sorry, would she? She's got the range. Yeah, she could roll better. You know what, let's do that. Now this doesn't say that you have to use it, uh, you know, before the uh, the Overlord rolls or anything like that. So yeah, each time you perform an attack with a bow, you may reroll one power die. And power dice are yellow and red, so you know what? I'm gonna try to get a better result out of this thing. So let's do it. And I have not. <laughs> nope, so one, two, three, minus two, one. So this guy drops down one. So he's at four health. He is a healthy little guy. All right, all right, all right. So her turn is over, unless I want to have her exhaust again, but she's got only two stamina left. So I don't think I want to do that. 
Yeah, let's just leave her there and let's tell the app that that's done. Okay, Jane, your turn is over. All right, Flesh Molders. So now it has the minions activate first. Um, you will notice that um, sometimes the masters will activate first, sometimes the minions will, so it's up to you to uh, really uh, keep an eye on that. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, you might have noticed this three up here. This has to do with how many times you get uh, knocked out, okay? Because when a hero gets knocked out, you actually click on him, you say KO, and then this thing will drop down by one. And if ever it reaches zero, you lose the scenario. And when you lose a scenario, you cannot retry it. You cannot redo it. It's just skipped. The app gives you like an XP and a handful of gold, and it's like, okay, move on to the next one, okay? Um, which can be a bummer. And that's why I said sometimes I cheat in the sense that if I get knocked out more than three times, I just won't tell the app that I got knocked out because the app won't know and I'll just keep playing because, hey, I want to keep playing, okay? <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that's what happens sometimes. All right, so let's move on to the Flesh Molders. So they have a special ability here. Each time a Flesh Molder recovers health, each monster within three spaces that is not a Flesh Molder recovers an equal amount of health. <laughs> okay, okay. And they will try to do what? They will try to spot the closest hero. Again, which means take a move action to spot the closest hero i.e. get within three spaces of him, and then they'll try to attack the closest hero. They are range monsters, so that could work. And if not, then each Flesh Molder recovers one health. And if they recover health, well, people within three spaces of them uh, might also. But I don't think they will recover health because we have not hit them yet. So, all right, let's go to the table and see how we're going to activate this stuff. Okay, so now we're talking about the minions. So it's these two guys here. Now, I could activate them in any order that I wish, but you know, I don't like to complicate things. I'm going to activate them, you know, according to their pips. So this is one, this is two. Let's activate this guy first. Now, these guys have a move of four, okay? So according to the app, we want to do spot the closest hero. So the closest hero to him is this guy. So spot means move and try to get within three. Uh, one, two, three. So if this guy ends here, he'll be within one, two, three. Yeah, okay. So he'll move. So he'll go one, two. He won't go further because he's trying to get within three. And he is, so that's it. So now, you know, you have to keep track of these things because like, okay, he moved two, right? That's two on four. So he still has two movement points like in a bank somewhere, okay? So you could get to the list of actions and it could say something like um, attack a hero, period, then retreat. So that means you'd shoot him, and then, because you have two of these action points in the bank, you could use them to retreat, which, you know, would bring him back over here. Now, if you moved four and you don't have any action points, and it says attack, then retreat, well, then you just can't retreat. So that's how that works. And we'll probably run into a situation where it'll happen. But for now, we've done action one, which is spot the closest hero. And then we move down the list, and we do attack the closest hero, which is that guy. Okay. Get <laughs> that guy. Grisbin. Okay, so let's check line of sight just to make sure. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Okay, he can shoot right there. He needs a range of one, two, three. All right, so he needs a range of three. Here we go. All right, he has that range. Way, yeah, he has that range. <laughs> and he does four damage. Now, he does, doesn't have any surges, so we don't even need to check that. And as far as Grisbin goes, uh, he already used his uh, his wooden shield. That's already tapped. So uh, yeah, the only thing you can do is roll this funky, funky white dice. White die. I always get that mixed up. I'm French Canadian, so yeah, don't blame me. All right, go. Okay, I mean, all things considered. So he takes three hits, which brings him down to 10. So that was the first flesh molder. Let's move on to the second one. My feeling is it's gonna be exactly the same thing. So he's gonna wanna spot the closest hero. So closest hero, he has a move of four, so he can do, he can move through friendlies, basically. So let's say he wants to go to one, two, three. That's three spaces uh, close to the hero. So he'll move for two, one, two. So spot has been done, and then it's attack the closest hero. So one, two, three, he needs a range of three to hit Grisbane in the face. Grisbane, I should say. Or maybe it is Grisbane, we don't know. All right, so here we go. Needs a range of three. He gets it, man does he get it. Okay, so that's two and a surge. Now, he will use a surge to do this because clearly he cannot mend. So this means one, two, three, four. So that's four damage. And now we roll four, Grisbin. Four damage, All right, that's horrible. So he takes four damage, uh, bringing him down to six. 
And now you see, I forgot again, okay? When the flesh molders activated, I could have used Jane Wildlander's ability to shoot, damn, but I didn't. I mean, I couldn't have shot the flesh molders because they're not in line of sight, but I could have shot the big Marriott guy that's literally right in front of her, and that was my plan. But you know what? Um, the master flesh molder is going to activate just now, so I'm going to use it on that turn for sure. All right, so yeah, let's go back to the computer. Okay, see, this was the screen I was telling you about. So men first and then this, but uh, yeah, only if the flesh molder has suffered damage. Okay, so uh, all minions activated. Yes, that is true. Now it moves on to the masters. Well, there's just one. The ability on top here can sometimes change, I believe, but it's the same as before. Okay. So the master is going to try to spot the monster with the m most damage suffered. Oh, so he's going to move towards the Marriott. Then he'll use heal on a monster, and if that doesn't work, he'll try to attack a hero. And if that doesn't work, if within two spaces of a hero, perform a move action and retreat. Okay, I'm pretty sure he's going to spot uh, the Marriott and then just heal him. So, okay, let's go check that out. All right, so spot the monster with the most damage suffered. That's him. He wants to get within three, which is weird. Why would he want to get within three? Can he heal that far away? What does it say here? Choose a monster within three spaces of this monster. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, he can. <laughs> okay, so within three. One, two, three. So he's going to need to move just one. Oh, oh, he's going to have to move more, actually. So one, two. All right, so he's close enough to do his thing. Now, now I'm using Jane's ability, okay? Because hopefully... <laughs> I can maybe kill this guy before he gets to heal him, I guess. So I'm going to do this um, before the, this guy can, you know, activate his ability. So I will exhaust for two. Oh, that's runebound talk right there. I will take two fatigue. Yep, I'll take two fatigue. And I will have her attack this way here to try to hit the Marriott. All right, so here we go. She needs a range of two. Yeah, she gets the range, and now I could reroll a power dice. Power die, sorry. Um, I mean, she has her range, and this can only get better. So yeah, I'll use her ability to reroll a power die. Damn, what is me with these rolls? <laughs> what is me with these rolls? That's some great English right there. Okay, so yeah, that would be one, and then I would use her uh, her surge here to add one damage. So that would be two damage, and then the Marriott with his beautiful black die. Of course he blocks everything. Okay, so that was totally wasted. All right, so let's actually now have the Flesh Molder do his thing. So he's gonna do, if we go down the list, it's gonna go to use heal on a monster. So choose a monster within three spaces, okay. And roll one red power die. Oh, okay, not too bad. The chosen monster recovers health equals to the health rolled. Okay, so let's do that. So red die. Of course, he recovers two. All right, so bringing him back up to six. Man, that's bleh. That's pretty bad. All right, let's not even bother with the app because it just, you know, the prompt disappears and it's basically now your turn. And the only guy who can do anything right now is little Tomble over here. So what will we have him do? All right, I'm going to move Tomble um, over here. So one, two, three. I'm thinking I can do this by him taking fatigue, I think, because I want him to do two actions. Yeah, so I'm gonna do this. I'll drop his stamina from five down to two. And his first action will be to attack. Now, Tombol has this weapon here, throwing knives, which are ranged, but uh, it says you run attacking an adjacent monster, gain plus one attack. So yeah, so I'm kind of always incentivized to go up in monsters' faces, even though uh, Tombol has a health of eight. So I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get right up in his face, as I did by exhausting three, and his first action will be to attack this guy with the throwing knives. All right, so blue die and yellow die. Well, that's not too bad, three. All right, I think I'm gonna leave this as is. If ever the Marriott's defense is too bad, um, I can actually use Fortuna's dice here to um, maybe have Tomble reroll one of those dice over here. This is a special item. You gain this at the end of a mission. Okay, let's do it. Let's go, Marriott. 
Oh, that's perfect. Okay, that's good. He takes three. That's good. This is half his life. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, well, I'm going to attack him again for sure. Yeah, so Tumble's second action will be to attack. Actually, no, hold on. There's one, two, three. And his knives. That's four. Yeah, hello. That was the whole thing, right? So down to two. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Tumble, you little bastard. Yes. I mean, I mean that in an endearing way. Let's do it. Wow. Okay, that's three and four because of his knives. Oh, what did I do? Oh, yeah, okay, good. All right, let's do this for the Marriott. Come on, come on, come on. I've got four attack. Four minus two is two, and he is kaput. Yes, that Marriott is gone. Okay, excellent. Now, when we play at my house and I play with uh, with people and I play as the Overlord, uh, every time somebody kills a master, I think it's on there, actually. Yeah, kill reward, see? Uh, heroes gain five gold after defeating a master, monster, a lieutenant, or a unique enemy. Yeah, because I want my um, my heroes to get buff. Because honestly, when I play as the Overlord, I bring the pain. <laughs> All right, so now we need to tell the app that this guy is dead. Okay, so we go over to the Marriott's icon on the right here, and we click on it, and we say Defeat Group. Now, of course, this isn't even a group. It's just, it's the Marriott. Again, don't, um, yeah, I don't know why this is not more precise. Uh, the app just doesn't know, right? So there you go. Um, there's also Force Activate, and I never use this. I guess it's if you, I don't know, if you miss an activation, like if you suddenly... You see these big screens and you just say next, next, next or something. You could say, okay, no, I really want this guy to activate. So it'll kind of force a turn on you. Um, yeah, there you go. So defeat group. Boom. Defeat many odds? Question mark. Confirm. Excellent. Now the good thing is they're gone. The bad thing is eh, they might get reinforcements. I don't know. It doesn't say. That's one of the things that's, that's different uh, with the tabletop game is you don't quite know what your whole mission is, necessarily. Like, now we just know, like, what do we know, really? If you click on the script here, it says what? Uh, locate the lost treasury. Okay, that's about it, right? But it doesn't say, like, the Overlord gets reinforcements every three rounds, or yada, yada, yada. It doesn't say that. You need to kind of figure that out for yourself. So it could very well be that when I click on Tomble and say, end turn, it might then say, spawn a myriad in the pool, or for every tentacle that you didn't kill, yada, 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 which I suspect is what's maybe going to happen. Yeah, we probably should have taken these things out. I don't know. Okay, so let's tell the computer that uh, Tomble's turn is over, and it is. So, end turn. There you go. <laughs> each hero suffers two damage for each tentacle within two spaces of him because well the game did kind of warn us these things are flailing around grabbing everything they can Ugh. okay so now it's up to us to just be honest and deal two damage to every character that's within two of these tentacles now you see the game doesn't know it knows nothing it doesn't know where you are this is really up to you to you know <laughs> be honest and deal that damage okay so let's do that well i mean i'll hit continue first Okay, so, good. So I just said new round and hero's turn. So now we get to go. And Tomble could actually go again if we wanted to. Okay, so let's go back to the table and uh, deal that damage that these darn tentacles have uh, given to us. All right, so looking at the board here, the only ones that are affected are uh, Tomble and Jane. All right, so she was at nine. I dropped her down to seven. He was at eight. I dropped him down to six. I've also reset all of their stuff giving them back their two actions. Um, I'm also reminded that he, that he is immobilized. So let's see what we can have these fine people do. Just realized I made a mistake. Um, Grisbane does not have this because it says here, discard this card or token at the end of your turn. Yeah, so this is gone, which is very good. Now, one thing that he's got um, in his cards is that um, if he starts his turn adjacent, it says here, at the start of your turn, if you are adjacent to at least one other hero, you and each other hero adjacent to you can recover one stamina, which is not uh, that bad. So maybe I'm going to have him go last so I can get these guys close. That's one theory, uh, one idea. Uh, the other thing I would like is... I would like him to search this thing. He can actually search from a distance, 
with his uh, one of his uh, powers. Hmm. All right, so I think I'm gonna have him do one, two, three, four. So that's his whole move. And then I'll just take a regular action to reveal this card because I, I looked and if I wanted to search like from far away, I also have to take a fatigue, which I didn't really want to do. Now, the good thing with Tomble is um, he's got appraisal. After you draw a search card, you may discard it to draw a new search card and you must keep the second one. So we will do maybe that. Now I will be drawing from this deck here. Now you don't recognize this back and that's because it's just stuff I print, I've printed out. Now in this deck, you've got the regular descent cards, but you also have these, uh, these extra cards that were made by um, Marcel something last name here, <laughs> who has worked on uh, Forgotten Circles for Gloomhaven and stuff like that. He was a big Descent, Descent fan and he made some cards and I printed some of those out. I've put them all sleeved with this backing. So that's what I'm gonna be drawing from. Well, actually, actually, maybe that's not what's gonna happen. Cause when you do a search action, you gotta go tell the app that you've actually, uh, you know, found that token. And the app might say, do not draw a card. I don't know, it might be a booby trap or something. I don't know. So let's go check that out. Okay, let's tell the app we're searching this token here. Deep in the water, something catches your eye. Search. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Simple enough. Discard this token and draw a search card. Um, most of the time, um, from my feeling is, it's going to say this and it'll say like gain six gold or something like that. And that gold will be automatically updated in here. As I've probably mentioned before, even if you draw a search card yourself and it says like 50 gold on it, that doesn't matter. It doesn't, the app doesn't register that. The app will only calculate the gold that it says that you got. So for now, there's no gold. We just draw a search card. So let's continue. All right, so let's actually go into here and draw. Now we can draw the first one and if we don't like it, draw a second one. So first one would be a Timoran Shard. Immediately place three tokens on this card. Once per turn, you may remove one token from this card to recover either two health or one stamina. Ooh, I actually do like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm doing that. I'm keeping that one. Let's for fun. Let's just see what the other one would have been. Oh, what is that? Haste potion. Action. Flip this card over to recover three health and gain five movement points. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Well, too late. So I'll shuffle this guy back in there. Okay, so I will put this on to Tomble, and those were his two actions. Okay, so Tomble is end turn. All right, so Flesh Molder's minion. Heal affects each monster within three spaces of the master. Of the master. Ah, uh, but hold, okay, so if a minion does heal, the heal will affect monsters that are close to the master. Okay, okay. So what will the minions try to do? Spot the closest hero, attack the closest hero, and then if within two spaces of a hero, perform a move action and retreat. Um, okay, we'll see. I think these two, probably. All right, so let's go to the board. Okay, so he's the first minion. He wants to attack the, to spot the closest hero. Spot is actually get within three spaces. So one, two, three, one, two, three. That's actually already happening. So he, he will not do spot the closest hero. So he'll move right on to attack the closest hero. And now these two are equidistant. So let's roll a die. So if it's one, two, three, it's him. And if it's four, five, six, it's him. So one, two, three, it's gonna be Grisbin over here. So this guy is attacking Grisbin. He does have line of sight from let's say this corner down to here. All right, so let's do that. Now Grisbin isn't looking too high. He's got six health, but um, yeah, we'll see. Okay, so these guys need a range of three. They have the range. And, okay, see now here, they have this actually. Now according to the app, you should try to use this before using that, but nobody is actually uh, wounded or anything. So he's gonna do one, two, and this is gonna be three. So let's roll for Grisbin. Ah, uh, see again, I probably could have had Jane attack. No, actually I could not have because this is her stamina. She doesn't have any stamina right now. So forget that. All right, let's roll for Grisbin. Okay, not too bad. So this blocks that and then two. But he can also tilt this. So he'll take just one. I say tilt, I meant exhaust, of course. This goes down to five. Okay, not that bad. Now, if we go back to the board here, then we go down the list actually. So spot, we did not do. 
we did attack the hero, and then it says, if within two spaces of a hero, perform a move action and retreat. He's not within two spaces, so we cannot activate that. Then we can go back up top to the list, and it says spot the closest hero, but again, that's already happening. So that's it. Uh, yeah, he. so essentially this, this monster, uh, this minion has only had one action, and that's it for him. So let's move on to minion number two, this guy here. So he wants to get within three spaces, uh, let's not forget, within three spaces and line of sight. So right now, uh, does he have line of sight? I believe he does because uh, from this corner, yeah, from this corner to, to this corner. So kind of shooting between his friend and hitting this. So I think he doesn't need to spot. So he's gonna attack the closest hero. So he's going to attack Grisbane, same thing as with minion one. All right, let's do this. He needs three range. He's got it just barely. Wow, that's still four. Ouch, that hurts. Okay, let's roll the white die here for uh, Grisbane. Okay, so he takes three in the face, bringing him down to two. Jeez. All right, just like that. So he didn't need to do spot, he moved on to attack, and then it's the same thing. He's not within two spaces of a hero, and that's it. That's the end of his turn. So then we'll tell the app that the minions are done, and we'll see what the um, master is going to do. Okay, so here we go for the master here. It says spot as many monsters within five spaces of this monster that have suffered health as possible. I guess spot as many monsters as possible. But no monster has suffered any damage. Any, uh, yeah, so he's not gonna do that. Then use heal on one or more monsters. Again, this will not happen because everybody's at top health. So we got here the last one. Each hero in line of sight of this monster suffers too. Okay, they're pretty much like <laughs> covering their bases here. So, okay, so this is gonna happen, but just once you cannot activate the same line twice. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's just have that happen. So each hero in line of sight. Well, we've got that guy, that guy, and... I believe not Jane, because you cannot uh, calculate line of sight, or you cannot check line of sight like along a line like this, because I think it's considered, well, it would go through this and that, right? So she will not suffer anything, but these two will suffer two damage. So let's do that. So he's gonna drop to four, and now I just realized that Grisbane will croak. <laughs> there you go, so he just suffered two damage. So he's dead. Wow, okay, so my hero is knocked out. So I'm gonna put one of these tokens on Grisbane's spot. Put that back here. And now because this has happened, um, we need to tell the app that Grisbane is KO. Has Grisbane the Thirsty been knocked out? Confirm, and you'll see this number will go down, supposed to anyway, to two. Yep, just like that. There's a big X right there. Okay, so then when he eventually gets back up, you'll click on him and you'll say recover. Okay, I just clicked on... Okay, I need to click back on his face. Okay, there you go. So if ever this pops up and you click somewhere... Okay, weird, weird. Okay, so if you click on his, on his guy, his icon, it's gonna go away. So then I told the computer that the flesh molders had activated and now it's back to us. So she could try uh, healing him, but he could also try standing up because uh, he didn't take any actions this turn, so his his sole action could be just to uh, to get up. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go back to the board and see what we're gonna do, actually. All right, I've thought about this. I will have Jane use her heroic feat, which states that, that as an action, she may move double her speed and perform an attack. This attack may be performed uh, before, after, or during the movement. So she can move actually 10, which is kind of insane, right? So she could do one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, she could be here. And then she could, uh, let's say as she's moving, she could attack this. And once she's here, her second action could be just to try to attack this guy. Yeah, why not? Let's do that. So one, two, three. Okay, so she's mid move. So now uh, these things have a shield value of, uh, let me check the app. It has one health and rolls one black defense die. Okay, so she's shooting it. Oh my god, what is that? Okay, but she still has, um, per attack, she has accurate. She can uh, re-roll a power die. Oof. Wow, okay, but let's roll that first. Okay. What in the name of the baby Jesus? Wow, that is a strong tentacle. Oh my god, you guys. So even if I re-roll this, I get one, two, and let's say the surge will add another for three. That's crazy. 
Oh, man. Yeah, somebody needs a mulligan. Okay, that's just bad. <laughs> The way to use a, uh, a heroic feat. All right, so she had done one, two, three. She can do four, five, six. She can move up to ten. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Now you see me counting through those guys, but that's because we also use the Imperial Assault rule that says you can move through enemy figures, but it, it costs you tw uh, twice your movement points, right? So I could actually do that if I wanted to, but then I'd be close to this tentacle, but I'd be close to these guys. Maybe I would draw their fire. Mm. Maybe I don't go that far. Maybe I go here, actually, because uh, Tomble has an ability that says that when he defends, if somebody's adjacent to him, he can use their die. Uh, so that would be good for him if she stays there. Man, that is not what I wanted to do. So let's just, for our, our second action, we'll just attack this master dude. So we don't need any range at all. And that is two. Wow, that is just some horrible rolling. I think I'm going to use her power to re-roll this die. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe every time I have used her power to re-roll, I've just landed on exactly the same thing. Okay, so that's two hits, possibly. And now the uh, Flesh Molder will roll a white die. And I will not keep that result. <laughs> Yay! All right, so the master takes one hit, bringing him from five to four. Ooh la la. Smooth moves, Xlax. All right. So I'm doing it off screen, but I'm telling the computer that Jane has ended her turn. And now we will have um, Grisbin here try to heal himself by taking a revive action. So we will put him back on the map, and I will have him roll two red dice and see how much he can heal. Now, honestly, uh, you guys, this is my least favorite part of Descent. I find that... This whole being knocked down and then rolling some, you know, let's let's face it, that's not a lot here. Just, you know, getting knocked down, trying to roll something good, meh, you know, then healing up a little bit. It's so tedious. And once that starts, the Overlord can easily just then crush you. And the scenario becomes a slow trudge of just, ugh. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. And that's why we have some uh, variants. And I'm not going to use them today. But for example, um, well, first of all, the rest, I don't know that I've told you that. Um, we use the rest, and I will probably use it here. That's the rest action from Imperial Assault. Again, this says that you now recover stamina equal to your stamina value. So let's say on your card it's printed uh, stamina 5, and you're actually at 2 right now. Well, that means you would heal 5 stamina. So that's 1, 2, 3, and then... Four, five, okay, whatever exceeds. If you recover more stamina than you suffered, the excess value recovers health. So in this particular case, if this was my base value and this was how much I had left, I would go, again, one, two, three, and then four, five would go towards my health. This really does help the heroes a lot. So if, if in your games you find that the, the Overlord is just too tough to beat, well, then use that. I mean, they use it in Imperial Assault, so, you know, not that bad, not that much of a cheat. But the other thing that I've come up with, for my group anyway, I will not be using this in this particular game, but when people play against me as the Overlord, uh, you need the healing ritual. And that basically is you're going to waste your whole turn to recover everything, okay? So you may spend two actions in order to recover all health and all stamina. Yeah, I know, seems strong, but again... Uh, no one can do this for you. You have to do this on your own. You're basically like in a corner, just, you know, praying to your God and, you know, getting a divine light shone upon you and you're back to normal. This actually really does help. So, but I won't be using that today for sure. So here we go with the actual descent rules of, uh, you know, um, healing yourself or standing up or what is it? Recovering. So roll two dice. So hooray, Grisbin will now be at four health on a potential of 14, which, come on, is pretty ridiculous. And he will get one stamina back. So one stamina and a magnificent four health. Now, because this was a stand-up action, that's the only action Grisbin can take. So put that there. Now, even though he spent uh, his one and only action to uh, revive himself, I could still spend uh, stamina to have him like kind of force move, basically. But um, that wouldn't really serve any purpose. Because right now he's two away from that tentacle, and if, let's say, I force move him over here by using stamina, he's two away from this one here. Now I checked, and it doesn't say anything about line of sight, it just says spaces, so one, two, right? It doesn't say, yeah, it doesn't talk about line of sight, so I'm thinking this is two spaces away from that tentacle, right? I mean, it doesn't say, so anyway. 
So I'll leave him here, I'll save his stamina for later, and now let's tell the computer that the turn is over, and probably uh, those uh, tentacles will slap us in the face. Okay, so we'll tell the app that Grisbon is recovered, because he is, and we'll tell the app he has ended his turn. There we go, each hero suffers two for each tentacle within two spaces of him. Now, so do you realize that if I had um, rolled only Let's say, yeah, I mean, it is a possibility. Now, if I had rolled, you can't see it, but let's say two, just two hearts, like one heart, one heart, when I was um, standing back up, okay? Well, then I would have been re-dead right now, right then and there. So that's why sometimes I, you know, I, ugh, I hate descent sometimes for that. You know what I mean? Like, it just makes things so, it kind of stops the gameplay. It makes things very sluggish. And then all your characters are doing are just healing and getting back up and getting out down and get it back up and just come on, let's get on with it. Let's let's move and fight, you know? I really don't like when that happens. But anyway, yeah, so there you go. That was my little rant about uh, the health system in Descent. So, okay, so everybody who's close to a tentacle, two spaces, uh, will get two damage. Okay, continue. All right, new round. Okay, they're not spawning anything else. So they really just want us to get the frack out of there. So, okay, let's go back to the board. All right, so I've dropped everybody down by two. So he was on four, now at two. Seven, now at five. Four, now at two. The actions are back. Let's reset everything. Um, yeah, they actually all do suffer damage because they were all within two spaces of one of the tentacles. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> I did not plan that out very well. Okay, okay, okay. So let's go to the board and see what we can have these people do. Okay, I think what I'll do is, first, I will actually give this to Jane. So she'll be able to use it on her next turn if she wants to, and I'll think she will. And now I will have him use his heroic feat. So he'll basically disappear from the map and sort of like move four away. So one, two, three, four, right next to the door. So the way this works is you remove him, you place this here, and then at the start of his next turn, you can have him appear four away from this. So it's going to be here, let's be honest. Let's just put him here for now. And his second action will be to take a rest action. But as I've said before, I'm going to use this type of rest. So I'll be bringing him back up to five. So that is one, two, three, and then four, five. So I'll bring the rest over to the health here. Now this rest here is... I, I would have to check the Imperial Assault rules, but I wonder if... Let's say I'm full up and I take a rest action. Do I then heal myself five? Because, you know, everything that goes over five, I, it goes over here, right? So, yeah, does that work that way? I'll check it out and I'll put a prompt at the bottom of the screen to let you know. Okay, so Tomble's turn is over. Flesh Molder's minion. Each attack gains plus one surge, okay? For each surge a monster does not spend, it gains one movement point. Ah, they'll probably have them retreat or something. Okay, so the minions will try to spot the closest hero, then attack the closest hero, then retreat. Because you see, again, you're like, eh, retreat? Well, did they move? Yeah, they moved because it's use a move action to spot. And then if you, this basically means if you have any movement points left from a previous move action, then use them to retreat. So this might work. And that's why they're giving us one more movement point. Okay, and after that, this is the backup thing. If within two spaces of a hero, perform a move action and retreat. See? Perform a move action and retreat. Because if you start with that, you will use the whole move action to retreat. Okay? You won't use anything... When it says then retreat, it's if you have any movement left, like, in the bank. And this is basically take the whole action to retreat. Okay, so let's see what uh, is actually going to happen on the map. Here, yeah, giving this a slight angle here. Looks kind of cool. Okay, so minion, let's activate the first one here. So spot the closest hero. Well, yeah, he is within three hexes of the closest hero, which is Jane. So that's not even going to happen. So the other one here says attack the closest hero, then retreat. But you see, he won't retreat because he actually did not use uh, any movement points. Okay, so he'll just do his attack and then the, the thing that says then retreat will not activate. All right, so he attacks Jane, he needs two range. All right, here we go, let's not forget they have an extra surge. Okay, so they have one, two, three, and this here could either be, they have an extra surge, okay? Mend, mend is basically, basically to mend themselves, and it's not gonna happen because they don't have any uh, damage, okay? So this surge will not be used, 
and they have a bonus one. So again, this means one, two, three, this surge would be four, and that other surge would gain them one movement point. So they were, are now at five instead of four. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So that's four damage to us. And Jane actually defends with these two dice. I Could it be that I forgot to use this brown die? I mean, Jane is at five right now on eight. Did she just take all that damage from other effects? Was she actually never attacked? I hope not. Um, yeah, because every time she gets attacked, she can use this die. Anyway, maybe I forgot. I don't know. So here we go. She defends. Ooh, that's actually excellent. Four. That was one, two, three, four. That blocks everything. That's very nice. Okay, cool, cool. So that was attack the closest hero, then retreat. But like we said, they can't retreat because they have never moved so far. So let's go down the list. It says, if within two spaces of a hero, yep, perform a move action and retreat. So they will perform a move, a move action using their four action points plus the one that they got because of that surge. So they'll move five. And when a, uh, when a bad guy retreats, he will just uh, pick a direction to move away from the hero as far away as possible. Now you could argue that uh, using his five, he could do like one, two, <laughs> three, four. Yeah, no, he couldn't. But let's say this was not water. Like, I don't think he'd do one, two, three, four, five, you know? Um, I just I, I just don't like the idea of them like running across people to escape. So I always have them go really logically to the furthest point, right? So let's just do boom, boom, boom. Okay, so he'll go way over here because he is a chicken. All right, so we'll do number two here. So spot the closest hero. So he needs to be close and line of sight. So he needs to be three away and line of sight. And I do believe, yeah, that's fine. So same thing as the other guy. Let's have him attack. He needs a range of one, two. Here he goes. Needs a range of two. Oh, yeah, he has it. And that's two damage. Okay. And he does gain an extra surge, which he will use here. So that's three damage. And she will roll. Mm, okay, so she does take two hits, bringing her down to three. Yeah, I really got to get her health and her stamina back. That's horrible. And back to the board here. It says then retreat, but he can't because he didn't have any action points. And then if he's within, and then if he's within two spaces of a hero, he is. He will perform a move action and retreat. Now he did spend that surge, so he's not going to get that extra action point. So he's going to move away four, which doesn't really change anything. So let's do one, two, three, or one, two, three. Nah, I don't know. Let's split them up like that. All right. So all minions activated. Master. So same thing up top. Spot the closest hero, attack the closest hero, then retreat, and it's exactly the same thing. Okay, let's do it. All right, so he will not spot. He doesn't need to because the closest hero is already here. He will attack, then not retreat because he has no action points. So exactly the same thing as those other two guys. Here we go. Doesn't need range. Wow, that's horrible. Holy baloney. So then they gain an extra surge, okay? And for each surge they don't use, they get an action uh, uh, movement point. But anyway, that's one, two, that's three, four, five, and he can actually uh, he can actually mend two. Yeah, yeah. Let's just check that out. Mend? Does it even say this monster recovers? Yeah. Okay. So you know what? He's got basically three surges now. So one of those surges will be to heal. So he'll bring him back up to five. That's bad. Another one of these surges will be to make uh, two damages, actually. And then the other surge will be to uh, just give him a movement point. Okay, so total, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, six damage. That's on Jane. All right, let's do that. Let's get that out of the way. Oh, that's actually not too bad. Actually, let's put it there. I like it there. Sorry. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So four on six. That's good. She only takes two. I mean, she's one away from dying, but geez. All right, so two damage here. So that brings her down to one. <laughs> yeah, she's coughing up blood, my friends. All right, then the uh, the retreat thing doesn't happen. So we move down to if within two spaces of a hero, which, yeah, perform a move action and retreat. So he's got a move of four plus one because of that extra surge, which again, doesn't matter. One, two, three, four, and five would bring him off the map. So let's bring him over here. Wow. Okay, these guys did a lot of damage. Okay, I'm going to tell the app that that's over. Okay, so now it's just back to our turn. 
Now I think I'm gonna have her go first and I'm gonna have her do a rest action. Actually, I'll have her do, I believe, two rest actions because since we are using the Imperial Assault rules, you can actually do this twice and use the rest to bump up your health. And now I have just checked the rules, the whole PDF on Imperial Assault, and I checked on BGG also. So if, let's say you're full up on this, um, and you do take a rest action, it all goes towards your health. So you see they have made a way for you to heal yourself during the game, which makes a lot of sense and will make things less tedious. So my first action will be to bring this back up to five, very normally like so. And then my second action will be to rest, bringing this back up to five, but I can't, so the five spills over here, bringing this up to six. So that's actually pretty good. Now I could also do this, uh, giving me, well, no, actually this makes no sense now because I'm, I'm full up. I'm not full up, I have two here. So if I recover one, well then it would spill in and this would become seven. But actually I think what I wanna do is I'm gonna transfer this over to uh, Grisbane. He's right next to me on the map. So <laughs> I know this thing is moving around. My plans change a lot, folks. My playstyle is erratic, that's the way it is. So I'm gonna send this over to Grisbane. So now her turn is over, so let's tell the app, but I don't think anything else is gonna happen because the flesh molders have already played. All right, let's tell the app Jane is done. Okay, cool, yeah, we can just keep going. This gives us a little uh, respite, okay. And let's not forget, when he ends his turn, everybody who's two away from these things will get two damage, so let's try to not have that happen. <laughs> All right, so first thing I'm gonna do with him is uh, actually activate this. At the start of your turn, if you are adjacent to at least one other hero, you and that hero um, can recover one stamina. Okay, now I don't think I can do this with Jane because now she's full up and as per the Imperial Assault rules, I'm not sure that an ability that recovers stamina will actually spill into your health. I really, I don't know. So I'm not gonna do it for now. I'll, if I find out, I'll let you know in a prompt at the bottom here. But for him, for sure, we will use that because he is adjacent to Jane. So he's gonna heal one of these, well, recover one of these. Okay, fine. Then let's actually activate that. So we're, we'll drop this by one and I'll have him recover uh, one stamina. So that's gonna be four. And now if we go to the map, maybe we can have him move either by spending some stamina or an action. Now it's gonna be time to get to that door pretty soon. Uh, Tomble will actually reappear somewhere here at the start of his turn, which is good. She's got a lot of moves. She has five usually. And he's slow, he's like one, two, three. So maybe, maybe I just push him forward a little bit with the stamina, and then maybe I take his actions to kind of heal him through that, uh, that resting uh, stamina boost thing. So, hmm, yeah, why not? Can we actually get him far away? Yeah, he's got four stamina. Can we do like one, two, three? And then he's far away from a tentacle, which is good. Okay, let's do that. So we'll drop his stamina from uh, this to this. And now as far as his actions go, well, I'm gonna use this uh, this resting technique. So first action is gonna be to bring this back up to four. So that's one, two, three, and then the fourth one goes on top here. And the second action will be the same thing. Now this should be, when you rest, it's at the end of your turn. So I should actually say rest, rest, and then do it all. But you know, I'm not, uh, it's not gonna change the game state at all. So again, we are resting for four. So that jumps over here bringing us to seven. Okay, I feel a bit better about that. All right, let's tell the app we're done with him. And now the tentacle is gonna slap us around. Yeah, each hero suffers two for each tentacle within two spaces of him. Continue, everything resets, and yep, it's our turn. Okay, pretty uneventful. But now we know that after one of these guys turns, um, the flesh molder is gonna go. Okay. So before we reset everything for the round, let's just see here. The only one within two hexes is actually her. And like we said, I don't think they need line of sight. So she'll take two hits. Now, if we want, because of her ability, we can drop the two hits onto there, which, you know, I think we might do. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's drop her down to three. All right, now let's reset everything. So actions. And now Tomble has to uh, move, well move, appear four spaces away from his token. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, I think right next to him. Now this is tricky because now he's the closest to the enemies. Hmm, do I want that? Or do I want him like over here? Okay, let's do that. We'll get rid of this. Okay, so who do we want to activate first? 
Well, uh, but you see, if I have Tomble move over here, his action could be to open the door. Now, do I want to open the door? Or do I want to clear these guys out before opening the door? If this was a game of Gloomhaven, I would say let's clear these guys out before, you know, releasing new monsters. Um, but I don't know what's going to happen. Sometimes when you open a door, uh, you know, since because this is an app, well, I mean, it could happen in, in a, a paper campaign as well, but it could say, like, these guys just run away and you proceed to the next room. It could happen, okay? It could say, like, as you cross on the other side, uh, the tentacles run amok and they wipe these guys off the face of the earth. It could happen. I don't know. So, yeah, so the question remains, do I want him to go here and open the door or should we just kick some butt? I mean, this could be a very short game <laughs> if we open the door and things go wrong. But again, I'm thinking back to a lot of people on BGG. They say this isn't a, this isn't a dungeon crawl. This game is a dungeon run. Like, don't stand around and fight. Just run all the time. So you know what? Maybe we should do that. Ugh, kind of risky, isn't it? Um, okay, you know what? Yeah, so I'm going to have him appear over here. His first action will be to actually open that door. So let's go tell the app. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button down below. Now, I know it seems like a very small thing to do, but it actually does help the channel when you do that. And if ever you should find yourself in a super generous mood, well, I do accept donations via PayPal. And anything you give, big or small, will help keep me going. It's catching snowflakes. <laughs> when you're a kid and you're outside and you're like, ah. <laughs>